Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we will be um, creating the play panel. So it'll be in addition to the GUI, and this will be the panel that holds the game board as well as keeps track and displays all the times and scores that need to be displayed on the screen. So previously, if you remember, in our game board class, we did all the displaying of the score, of your current score and time. We had this entire method right here. Um, we had all that and we were drawing it all in this render method and we got rid of it in the last video when we were fixing up this class because we're gonna have it more organized and it makes more sense for um, the panel to draw the scores because if you think about it the game board should just be the game board it really shouldn't have to draw anything besides the game board and the tiles itself so let's go ahead and create a new class we're gonna call this play panel Now play panel is going to extend GUI panel, which is standard for creating uh, these GUI screens. And it's going to hold a bunch of variables in it because it's got to keep track of a bunch of things. First of all, it's going to have the reference to the game board. So this is no longer going to be in the main class, but instead going to be in this class. It's going to have a buffered image called info. This is going to be the image that's going to draw all the scores and the times too. Just minimize that. Um, it's going to have a record of the score manager which will be obtained from the game board. We're going to have a font dedicated to whatever score font. So this is just a variable to make sure everything uses the same font. We're going to have two strings. One's going to be a time string that's formatted and a best time that's formatted as well. Now let's go ahead and create uh, some variables for the game over. The game over is going to have three GUI buttons. First one going to be try again. So this button will have the function to allow the user to try again without restarting the application. We're going to have a GUI button called main menu. And we're going to have a GUI button called Screenshot. This will allow you to take a screenshot and we'll save the screen to the desktop so you can show it to whoever if you want to just show off your high score. Uh, and the main menu button's pretty self explanatory, it takes you to the main menu. Now we're going to create some variables to keep track of what the buttons look like and how they're spaced out and whatnot. The point of having these variables here is so that you can go back and change any of these variables to adjust slightly where the buttons are located. So one uh, integer we're going to make is the small button width. Um, I wish I had a diagram to show you what uh, the final game was going to look like. I guess I could, uh, you know, I'll run this game just to show you what it looks like. So let me just run this. All right, um, it's just gonna be starting up. All right, here we go. So this is the finished application. I remember showing you guys this a while ago. Um, so this is as let's let's take a look at what it's gonna look like when you lose. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly lose, or at least attempt to lose. And you'll see that this game over fades in in a very derpy fashion. Um, and you have these buttons, try again, screenshot, and back to main menu. So as you can see, there's two smaller buttons and one larger button. And that's what's referred to as the small button width. That's the width of this button here. Now the big button will be equal to twice this plus the spacing in between. So keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to X out of that. And let's continue coding. All right. We're going to have a private integer for spacing between the buttons, which will be set to 20 pixels by default. 
and we're gonna have a prime integer large button width which will be equal to the small button width times 2 plus spacing just like I said earlier um, along with the button width we need button height which is the same for both the large and the small button a boolean added an alpha channel this will be for the fade in effect a font for the game over and a boolean for if you want to screenshot and those are all the variables that we will be needing to create now let me just check something all right I'm going to split this video up into two parts just because this is a pretty big class and I don't want a really long video so this will be part one and we'll get through the constructor I think as well as maybe some more things anyways let's start by initializing some of the fonts so the score font is going to be equal to the main font in our game class dot derive with the float argument of 24f so that's just going to change the size the game over font is also going to be equal to game dot main dot derive font whoops derive font and this time we're going to use 70f for a bigger font the board is going to be equal to a new game board so this is exactly what the code looks like in the main class with divided by 2 minus game board dot board height our board width my bad divided by 2 comma game dot height minus game board dot height dot board height minus 20 so that will offset it 20 pixels from the bottom of the screen let's go ahead and go into this game class and let's do a few things first just really one thing actually right here under the screen dot add we're gonna add just one more thing so do add play new play panel so that will add uh, another panel to our list of panels and uh, yep there we go uh, what am I doing head back in your play panel alright we're going to set the scores equal board dot get scores so that's going to be our score manager and info is going to be equal to a new buffered image that's going to be the width of the game dot width 200 in height and just going to be an image dot type underscore int underscore rgb okay time to initialize our buttons main menu is going to be equal to new GUI button and it's going to be positioned at game dot width divided by 2 minus large button width divided by 2 that's going to center it and then we're going to set it to 450 Y and large button width for the width and button height for the height Good. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this down. Um, except this one's going to be try again. And this one is going to be screenshot. Screenshot. Alright. This one is going to be this x value. Let's get rid of all these, really. Um, we're going to do main menu dot get x main menu dot get y minus the spacing minus the button height small button with button height all right so let me go pull up that game again just so just so you guys can see exactly what all this is i really should just um keep the game open in the background so that we can easily refer to it and there's the game over screen so if you guys can see, we did main menu dot get x so that gets this x position right over here. Main menu dot get y that gets this top left corner, minus the spacing which is these twenty pixels in between, minus the button height which puts you up here. 
All right, we're gonna see something very similar for the screenshot, except the X is gonna be plus a button plus the spacing. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So here, we're gonna put the try. Whoops. Here, we're gonna go ahead and put the try again dot x. So instead of using the main menu to offset it, we're gonna use the try again button, which is more similar on the x value. And we're gonna add try again dot width. This is another way of expressing small button width. Really doesn't matter what you put in there. Plus spacing. All right, then we're gonna do try again dot try try again dot get y because it is on the same y value and small button width and button height. All right, now that we've set up the buttons, let's go ahead and set the text on the buttons so for the first one we're gonna set it to try again screenshot ah keyboards hating me today screenshot we're gonna set the text to screenshot and main menu is gonna be set to back back to main menu all right let's go ahead and add some of the action listeners for the um, for the buttons so try again we're gonna add an action listener new action listener and we're gonna go ahead and we don't need to have all that junk in here, all we're gonna do is say board dot get board dot or that get scores dot reset. Cause you're trying again, we gotta reset the current scores. Then we have to reset the board. Alpha, we're gonna set to zero. We're gonna remove the try again button. We're gonna remove the screenshot button, and we're gonna remove the main menu button. So essentially we've just, um, we were previously on the game over screen and now that they've hit try again, we gotta remove all the all the buttons from the, from the GUI, reset the scores, reset the board, and reset the alpha back to zero. So that when they lose again, um, it won't start at 70 or whatever the final uh, alpha is. And added will be set to false. All right, screenshot, we're gonna add an action listener. Screenshot dot add action listener, new action listener. And in here, we're just gonna do screenshot dot equals true. That'll set the Boolean to true, which will then later be checked out to draw the screenshot and save it. Menu, we're gonna add an action listener. Action listener. And this time we're gonna use GUI screen dot get instance dot set current panel to menu. Pretty straightforward. All right, let me check to see how much time we have. All right, we're currently at 14 minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna end the video here. I don't want to do too much, and I want to make sure that we take this chunk by chunk. So let's go over what we did. We have a bunch of variables at the top that are being determined. These variables are used for information purposes and are all put together and held by the play panel. And these game over variables are specifically meant for the game over screen. This will keep track of mostly the GUI stuff, a lot of the GUI variables. And in here we just set up some of the locations on the screen. All Whenever I add locations, whenever I do anything like that, you guys can always change it. Uh, make buttons that go, you could do three vertical, you could do three across, it doesn't matter how you guys do the buttons. Um, this is just one example, so please mess around with that, do whatever you want. 
You can also change the text. You can add buttons. You can add action listeners, whatever. I do recommend, though, that you keep what I have at least as a minimum in my action listeners so that nothing gets messed up. And if you guys enjoy the video, please remember to like it and subscribe if you want to be notified when new videos come out. See you guys in the next video.